AMD just released two brand new GPUs that are so powerful that Nvidia is going to be seriously hard pressed to even compete. Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by RGB Swap, a better alternative to eBay that I really think you should take a look at. RGB Swap is a marketplace exclusively for selling and buying computer parts that offers much lower fees than competitors such as eBay as well as greater protection against scams. Whether you're a buyer or a seller, you're guaranteed to be protected since all orders have to be paid for first and the funds are held for 48 hours after the buyer receives the item or they leave feedback ensuring that you never get sold a bad item. Additionally, all disputes are manually reviewed and PayPal is used exclusively for an extra layer of security. I gotta tell you guys, I like this website a lot and I really want it to take off as a better alternative to eBay, so please, if you're interested in buying or selling PC parts online, click the link in the description below and give it a shot. I think you'll really like it. So Andy just announced a whole bunch of new exciting stuff ranging all the way from their upcoming MI200 GPU, which is gonna be the first GPU to actually feature an MCM or multi-chip module design and could potentially be the fastest GPU ever created and it has up to 128 gigabytes of HBM2 memory all the way to actually they did end up talking about what is going to be their first Zen 4 products in the upcoming Genoa CPUs which are going to be for the servers but I think all this stuff is going to give us a really good idea of what the RDNA 3 architecture could potentially look like as well as what we could see with Zen 4 on the desktop so let's go ahead and get right into it first let's go ahead and talk about those GPUs because I know that's what most people are going to be very, very excited about, especially considering that, like I mentioned earlier, this is the first multi-chip module designed GPU, and this could unlock new frontiers into performance that we've never seen before on desktop GPU. So again, let's go ahead and get right into this one. So the first one I want to talk about today is the AMD Instinct MI250. Now, this is being produced on the TSMC 6 nanometer node. It is based on the CDNA2 architecture, which means that, yes, this is for the data center, so no, you're not going to be seeing this inside of your you know tower desktop but either way again this is going to tell us a lot about the upcoming rdna3 architecture which is also going to be an mcm design now this thing actually does have two compute tiles or two gpus and it has a total of 208 compute units which is a massive increase from their last mi100 which actually only had up to 120 compute units so yeah that's a huge increase uh, in terms of the clock speed that is also going up it's up to 1700 megahertz on this one the mi100 only had up to 1500 megahertz so another improvement there apparently it's going to have up to 362 teraflops of fp16 compute performance in terms of fp32 compute which would be kind of more what you'd expect to see for you know gaming applications it does actually have up to 45.3 teraflops so that's absolutely massive fp64 47.9 once again absolutely massive there now in terms of the amount of vram on this chip you're actually looking at 128 gigabytes of hbm2e memory so that's just absolutely insane and apparently the memory clock is 3.2 gigabits per second on a 8192 bit bus for a total memory bandwidth of 3.2 terabytes per second which is just absolutely mind-blowing and I do believe that's the most amount of memory bandwidth that we have ever seen on any GPU product ever now in terms of the amount of TDP you can expect out of this GPU we're actually talking about 560 watts so this is going to give you guys an idea that yes the next generation GPUs if they're going to have multiple GPUs on one single graphics card you, we are probably going to be talking about increasing that power limit both from AMD as well as Nvidia as Nvidia is going to have to drive up the amount of CUDA cores they're going to be able to put on their GPUs as well as the clock speeds to try and compete with something that you know could look something like this coming out from RDNA 3 uh, from a a AMD because that's going to push the performance boundaries further than we've ever seen before and it's also going to push Nvidia to try and make their biggest baddest GPU ever so yeah the power that you're going to be expecting out of these GPUs just expect it to go up considerably I mean we're talking probably over 400 watts on the desktop variants for the flagship GPUs coming out from both AMD as well as Nvidia. Video. And then finally, their biggest, baddest GPU is going to be the AMD Instinct MI200. Now, this GPU actually is very, very similar to the last one, same 6 nanometer node. Basically, all the same specs, except for this one actually has up to 220 compute units at that same 1700 megahertz, which means that you are going to get up to 383 teraflops of FP16 uh, performance and up 
to 47.9 teraflops of FP32 performance. Again, the same, uh, uh, you know, 128 gigabytes of RAM, as well as the same 8192 bit bus, giving you the same 3.2 terabytes per second. Uh, and it still actually has the same TDP at 560 watts. So this is the big boy. This is like the biggest thing they can possibly produce. And this thing is going to put out a ton of performance. It's going to be a serious threat to NVIDIA in the data center. And honestly, I, again, like I mentioned earlier, this is kind of giving us an idea of what RDNA 3 could look like because we're talking about a GPU that has nearly doubled the amount of compute units. And now if you take a look at the, you know, 6900 XT right now, that actually only has 80 compute units. So if they're able to nearly double the amount of compute units on the data center side by going to an MCM design, I wouldn't be too surprised if you also see nearly double the amount of compute units coming out of the, you know, RDNA 3 architecture with the 7900 XT. So, you know, maybe we won't see 160 compute units, but maybe you will see 150 or 140 compute units on their flagship GPU, which is going to bring an enormous amount of performance increase as well as, you know, we also have to consider that not only are they going to be basically nearly doubling the amount of compute units coming in the RDNA 3 architecture probably later this year or early next year, but on top of that, we're also going to be talking about an increase in clock speeds as well as an increase in IPC. So yeah, the 7900 XT is going to be an absolute beast. It's probably going to require, uh, you know, over 400 watts as well to try and pull off something as crazy as they're going to be trying to achieve. But either way, this is definitely going to push NVIDIA to try and fight as hard as they can because this is going to pose a serious threat. Not only is the MI200 going to be a serious threat in the data center, but RDNA 3, if it's looking anything like this, if it's going to see any of these benefits, is also going to pose a very serious threat to NVIDIA when it comes to gaming. And I think NVIDIA is really going to have to lean into stuff like DLSS as well as their other software advantages that they may have because I think, honestly, guys, they're going to have a hard time competing and may actually lose next generation uh, you know, if we compare like the 7900 XT to the RTX 4090 when it comes to the raw 3D performance that you can expect out of these cards. But now let's quickly go over the CPU stuff that AMD talked about because they basically did just kind of announce Zen 4 with the upcoming Genoa processors as well as the Bergamo processors that are going to be coming to the data center. Now Genoa is going to be kind of more like uh, the traditional Epic CPUs that we've seen in the past. However, this one's going to have up to 96 cores, which is just absolutely insane. And it is going to be based on the Zen 4 architecture. And then when it comes to the Bergamo processors, apparently this is going to be a, a new design based on Zen 4, except for it's going to be like really high density. It's going to allow them to get up to 128 cores, which is just absolutely insane. And apparently this is going to be based on Zen 4C. Now, when it comes to the uh, Genoa processors, they state that apparently it's going to be coming sometime in 2022, which means that yes, Zen 4 on the desktop is likely also going to be coming out at some point in 2022, probably just after the Genoa processors uh, come out. So if we see any sort of benchmarks on these Epic CPUs, that will give us a good idea of what Zen 4 is going to be like on the desktop. Now, when it comes to the Zen 4C Bergamo processors, apparently those aren't going to be available until 2023. But, you know, either way you look at this, this is going to also pose a very serious threat to Intel when it comes to the data center. And it goes to show that AMD is not resting on their laurels and they are making as many advancements as they possibly can to try and make sure that Intel isn't able to surpass them once again. But hey, that's just what I think. Do you think the AMD's next generation flagship GPU will actually finally beat NVIDIA? Or do you think that NVIDIA is going to win once again? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA get more stock. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.